For this week's video, we're going to show you few of the visions, top places to visit when in Pakistan. So we counted, I think, more than six times between us we've visited Pakistan, haven't we? We've been a fair few, yeah. Yeah, and so the last time we went was on February this year. And we spent just over a month exploring different regions of Pakistan. And this time we even managed to make our way to the northern region, one of the most beautiful areas, Gilgit and Hansa Valley. As you may know, Pakistan is known for its delicious food, kindness of people and diverse landscapes. So join us in this week's video where we take you through our top 10 places we visited when we went to Pakistan. We're Nadia and Irfan and we've travelled over 40 countries around the world. We're expecting a little pumpkin in October 2021 and what we're really excited about is this little addition joining our quest, visiting every single country. So come follow us on our journey while we travel around the globe. To kick things off, we're going to take you to Anarkali Bazaar. This is one of the oldest surviving markets in South Asia, dating about 200 years old, some sources say. This is where you go to get a true local Lahori shopping experience. Walk through the side streets, walk through the main streets of the bazaar and just take in all the different colours, the smells, the aromas of the food as well as just soaking in people going about their day and doing their shopping. When we were walking through the side streets it was a really really hot summer's day and we stopped off and got a glass of freshly squeezed carrot juice and that really did cool us down so definitely visit Anargali Bazaar if you want to get a local shopping experience so next on the list is the Wagga border crossing ceremony now this is something that me and Nadia really really enjoyed while we were out there and we would definitely recommend if you find yourself in Lahore in the evening so located about 15 miles outside of the Lahore city is a small border village called Wagga Every day, around two hours before sunset, there is a lowering of the flag ceremony. Now it's conducted by the Pakistani rangers on the Pakistani side and the border security force on the India side. It's a lowering the flag ceremony that lasts typically around 30 to 45 minutes. I would say arrive early, soak in the atmosphere, witness the patriotism of the Pakistani people and if you're lucky you may even be able to get to take some pictures with the rangers and also right on the border where the gates are. Definitely visit this place if you're in Lahore before sunset. So next on the list is something which still to this day when me and Nadia think about it and talk about it astonishes us and it's an area called Taxila. Taxila is located around 45 minutes to an hour north of Islamabad and it's an area and a region which shows you the true historical importance of Pakistan to this day. I would say make your way across the Jindal temple first which is a temple built by the ancient Greeks when Alexander the Great was passing through conquering up to the Indus Valley, then make your way to Taxila Museum where you'll get to see the various different cultures that settled in Taxila over the years including a lot of Buddhist remnants. Definitely want to visit, definitely want to see and it's something really different when you're in Islamabad visiting that area. So check it out if you have a day spare. Another must visit place when you're in Lahore is Food Street and yes as the name suggests, it is a place where you can go and get some food. It's a short street lined with some cafes and restaurants as well as some street food vendors and it's absolutely the best place to go and get some amazing views of Bachai Mosque. I'd recommend going to Hueli restaurant where the food is really nice, go up to the first floor and sit on the balcony about one hour or an hour and a half before sunset, have dinner, overlooking the Badshai Mosque while the sun goes down and honestly you cannot beat that beautiful view. Once the sun's gone down walk around Food Street and just take in the marvel of the original architecture that's all been restored with lovely vibrant colours. also recommend sitting down and having a cup of tandoori chai which is made in clay pots bubbled and then served in clay cups. It really does add to the flavour and it's truly unique. Have a nice pot of rice pudding to really finish off the evening and honestly it really hit the spot. A short walk from the Delhi gate 
within the walled city of Lahore is Wasir Khan Mosque. This 17th century mosque was commissioned by one of the most famous Mughal emperors called Shah Jahan. Considered to be one of the most ornately decorated mosques ever built in the Mughal era, you can really see all the effort that went in with the vibrant colors used across the whole mosque. There's a lot of construction and restoration work going on and that's because there's a local trust called the Aga Khan Trust in conjunction with the Norwegian government that are using the original techniques used back in the 17th century to really bring that colour back to life again and that was really really great to see. We visited the mosque with our local tour guide Anjum around 7 o'clock in the morning and we had the whole place to ourselves. We sat down, we walked around and we really, really got that amazing, serene, calm feeling that you do when you visit any mosque across the world, but within a very busy city of Lahore. After visiting the mosque, we walked around the wall city and we got a lovely spot of local breakfast. So definitely visit early in the morning if you want to visit Wazir Khan Mosque. Moving towards the northern region of Pakistan in Gilgit is Atabad Lake. Atabad Lake formed as an aftermath from the landslides that happened in the region in January 2010. What followed after the landslides was local rivers rerouting and flooding the whole region, displacing thousands of people over the coming months. When the nearby dam was rebuilt and stopped the flooding, the result was this beautiful, pristine, turquoise lake which has now become a tourist attraction in the region. When you visit the lake there's many activities to do. You can hire a boat and take a trip up and down the lake or even rent some jet skis. When we visited it was in the cold months and the lake was half frozen so we decided to just take in the beauty and take some pictures. But definitely if you're passing through Hunza Valley stop off at Atabad Lake and just take in the marvel of what is the remnants of a landslide within the area. So this bridge was built to connect two local villages that are separated by the Hunza River. It's a really, really beautiful bridge, but dangerous at the same time. So be careful if you're trying to cross it. Nadia and I attempted, and I just took a few steps. Nadia took way more steps than I did. But the planks are separated with large gaps. So hold on tight, take some pictures, and some people actually do cross all the way. I mean, I tried, but I got scared to be fair. On the way to the suspension bridge, there's a few dry fruit stalls and some places where you can get some cups of tea. So I definitely recommend checking it out because dry fruit is a local speciality in Hunza. When we were returning back to the car, we noticed a restaurant called Babi Husseini restaurant. We stopped off there to get a bite to eat and it definitely did not disappoint. We got the biryani and it was absolutely delicious and a cup of tea that really set us up for that hour journey back to Gilgit. So, if you're in the region, stop up at Babi Husseini for a biryani. The next place is one for the serious hikers out there, Afgarish Valley. So when we think of this place, it really brings a massive smile to our face purely because we weren't expecting any of this. Our local tour guide, Parvez Posh, told us about this hike as it's right next to his village, Jamalabad. After having breakfast in the morning, our tour guide picked us up and took us to his village of Jamalabad. We parked up the car and we started this hike. Unknown to us, we saw many things that we weren't expecting. Walking through the valley, we crossed a bridge that was made by Pervez's dad, an amazing hunter who we had the opportunity to meet. And while we carried on with our trek after crossing the bridge, we saw some snow leopard footprints. Yes, snow leopard. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see any, but it looks like the snow leopard was going in the opposite direction and they tend to be quite shy and run away when they see humans. Nadia took a break and I carried on with Pervez. And at this point, I would definitely recommend wearing some decent shoes when you're trekking because things got a bit slippery. Check out one of our YouTube videos where, we, where I highlight some of the difficulties that I had in this trek. Nevertheless, I made it through this landslide area. I set up the drone to take some amazing footage of some ibex running across the mountain, something that I just didn't ever expect. After capturing that epic footage, we had to make our way back through the slidey area which is again quite challenging but I'm here to tell the tale of this amazing hike. I definitely recommend hiking through Afghaz Valley, wear some decent shoes, take some water and go with the guide who knows the hike inside out because it's an area where you won't see anyone for miles. Definitely visit 
of Karaj Valley if you get the opportunity to. On the first day we arrived in Lahore, we got a taxi to Badshai Mosque, but we were actually dropped off on the side entrance and we made our way unknowingly into Lahore Fort. There we met our tour guide Anjum. For the next day and a half, we spent our time walking around and exploring the city with him. And on the second day, he gave us the best tour that you could ever have around the Badshai Mosque. There's parts of the mosque, the sound waves bounce off various parts of the wall, giving you a very different feeling of what you're hearing. For example, there's a part of the mosque where if you stand straight, look ahead and speak, it sounds as if your voice is coming from behind you, not in front. I mean, that really blew us away, how that could even happen. The whole architecture of the mosque was set up in such a way to beautify the recitation of the Holy Quran and the five daily calls to prayer. I definitely recommend giving Anjum a call or dropping him a WhatsApp message to really take that experience of Badshai Mosque to the next level. Last but not least, and number one in our most favorite thing in Pakistan is Rakaposhi viewpoint. I would say actually Hanza Valley and Gilgit area as a whole is a number one thing to do in Pakistan but this viewpoint really blew us away. So after driving through a bumpy steep road up a mountain we parked up near the Rakaposhi viewpoint. A short hike right to the top of the hill we got a view of what Hanza Valley is really known for snow-capped mountains, amazing greenery, and just breathtaking views of the whole valley. What really topped it off was this lovely security guard that was going out of his way to show us the best points to take pictures. And he was just so kind and loving, which is actually typical of the whole region and how the people are very hospitable, very welcoming, and they just really enjoy seeing people, not only domestic tourism, but international tourism. When we told him that we were actually from the UK, I would definitely recommend visiting this place because the viewpoint was just breathtaking. We had the whole viewpoint to ourselves, and it was really, really quiet and you could just hear the winds blowing and just take in the beautiful scenery. Definitely one to do, not just Rakapushi viewpoint, but I would say Hanza Valley and Gilgit as a whole when you visit Pakistan. Okay guys, that's the end of the video. We hope you enjoyed our top places to visit whilst in Pakistan. Pakistan has so much to offer. It was so hard to pick the top places, but do check out our Pakistan playlist where we go into more detail of all the places that we visited. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you guys on the next one.